Hey there folks, John here with Through My Lens, and today I'm coming to you with a knife review. Today we're going to be looking at the Spectre from Holt Bladeworks. Now, this, uh, this Spectre is not mine. Uh, it's owned by a friend of mine that lives locally and is kind enough to allow me to borrow it uh, to photograph and review. Um, it's it's uh, number 938 in a series that I believe is going to only go up to about 1,000. Once, uh, once they hit 1,000, I believe Holt Blade Works will stop making the Spectre and they will shift over to manufacturing a new model called the Haptic. But uh, again, my friend was lucky enough to procure one. Uh, he won it in a maker's lottery online. Uh, so let's go ahead and break it out of this uh, very nice zipper pouch. By the way, you don't get one of these zipper pouches when you buy uh, one of the uh, Holt Spectres. Uh, he knew he was going to get one. Uh, and he knew it would take some time. He uh, actually won the zipper pouch before he got the knife uh, in a similar kind of ladder giveaway kind of thing online. Uh, so uh, again, this is a very hot knife uh, that uh, has really taken the knife enthusiast community by storm. Uh, so let's take a look at it. There it is. Um, and this is just an absolutely gorgeous knife. Now, I, I don't want to say that no two specters are alike. Uh, there are some that are very similar, but there are many, many different variations in color, uh, in terms of the hardware, in terms of the blade finish, in terms of the uh, mill, mill work that's done to the titanium uh, scales here. This one's in what I believe is called a feather pattern, uh, but again, many others exist, uh, but it it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, from what I understand, Angie uh, is doing the anodization work that you are seeing here on the pivot. Uh, it is also present on the screws, the backspacer, and the pocket clip. And what's interesting about this, it, it, you know, obviously you see blue in there, but Depending on how you, you, uh, the light hits it and how you hold it, you're going to see some magentas in there as well, uh, which is really interesting. I've never, never really encountered anodization that is, you know, that has had quite this almost prismatic effect to it. It's, it's, it really is stunning. Um, my friend is just so, so fortunate because you don't really get any control when you win these lotteries. Uh, over what the knife looks like. It's just, you know, luck of the draw, literally. Um, <clears throat> you'll also see that the blade centering is really just spot-on perfect, and there's just not a lot of room uh, between those scales, but it fits in there just perfectly. It really is quite amazing. And uh, uh, Holt Blade Works uses an adjustable detent, um, and it's a really innovative feature that's, that's in one of these knives. It's, it just blows my mind that uh, they've only been manufacturing flipper knives or folding knives for a couple of years now. Um, and, they, you know, they've, they're just doing things that, you know, uh, other manufacturers, you know, can't or, or won't do. Man, that blade just fires out of there. It is fantastic. Liner lock, as you can see. Um, just such an awesome, awesome um, flipping, uh, flipping motion there. Check out that just fall shut. Wow. Wow. But the flipping action is just incredible. It really is. There's another. That gravity will just take it right in. Just perfect. This literally is just, there's, there's nothing you can really fault here on this knife. Um, let's do a couple of size comparisons here. Um, this is, let me say that this knife is very different than just about every other knife that's in my collection. I tend to gravitate more uh, toward tactical uh, folders, uh, knives that can kind of flex into a defensive purpose or capability if needed to. And uh, 
this one certainly could. The, the blade, they say, is about 3.6 inches in length. Uh, but this really is more of an EDC knife or, or really even a gentleman's folder. Uh, it's so thin and light. Um, I think it's only about 3.5 ounces uh, in weight. Um, so it just would be a perfect knife to carry and use if, if you wanted to. They, the price of these, they start, if, if you happen to win one in a lottery or you, you, you're you able to, to, to buy one at, at uh, table prices, uh, they're about, they start in, in the 700-ish range uh, and they go up from there depending on just how embellished the knife is in terms of decoration, in terms of what's done to the, the blade and the, the scales and so forth. Um, again, the, the series is probably going to stop at, at uh, 1000 This one's 938 They're doing a series of auctions right now, and the, the re remaining models that you know, clearly are you know, some of the higher end of what Holt Blade Works can produce, uh, they're going for seven, dollars $8,000 each. It's, it, it's mind-blowing. Uh, but again, comparison, getting off track. So here's the only knife in my, in my collection that really is, is fairly similar to, uh, to this in terms that it's not really a, a dedicated tactical folder. And that's my uh, uh, Reeves Sabenda, Sabenza 21. Uh, now this one is a uh, Blade HQ exclusive with these carbon fiber inlays. Um, so it is a little bit more uh, on the collectible side of things. Uh, but uh, you know, I've got I've got a review of this this one and, and, and you know what I like about it. But again, this one's this one's not really tactical. Um, this is more of an EDC knife. So let's go ahead and show you these. The the Sabenz is clearly beefier um, than the the whole blade work. The knife blades. Are very similar in length. Uh, the, uh, the Spectre has, has, a, has a thinner blade stock. It's, it's a very, very slicey knife. Again, uh, this would be just a wonderful knife to use and carry from an EDC perspective um, just, just because of, of uh, uh, you know, how functional it is. You can see that the blade has Kind of a stone wash, it's kind of a polished stone wash, if you will, finish applied to it. Um, so it's got a very reflective quality, but there is kind of a stone wash to it. Again, very, very thin. A little bit of jumping there on the, on, the, on the knife. Not particularly functional, but probably not necessary for this knife. Really stunning. Um, you know, I've, I've been asking myself, is this, is this a knife that I, that I would actually want? Uh, do I want to try to uh, do what it would take to chase down a, uh, a Holt a Blade Work Spectre? There, <clears throat> you know, it, if, you can, if you can get one at the table price, they're not particularly too hatefully expensive. Um, you know, sell a couple knives. You know, 700s, I guess I should not say that they're not expensive. That's a lot of money for a knife. Um, but uh, uh, it's, not, it's not a price that you, you couldn't come up with that kind of money if you, if, <laughs> if you really wanted to. The issue for me, in, and Joe and Angie seem like just the most lovely people. Everybody that you talk to just really, really likes them, who's had the opportunity to meet them and interact with them. I have not. Uh, but I've read about them on their website. If you if you haven't, I would recommend you do that. Angie uh, uh, apparently shows and, and and maybe even breeds Rottweilers. I'm a Rottweiler person. I have I've shown Rottweilers before in the past, uh, so that that's kind of a connection I have with them. Of course, knives. Uh, they're both engineers. I I I, th I would just love to get to know them. They, they seem like such lovely people. Uh, I can't say that I I I'm really the type of a knife person that would go after this knife. And that's not because it's not a fantastic knife. It, it very much is. Uh, you really can't take away from this design and from the execution, particularly when you think about um, what 
they're able to do as a husband and wife team. It's, it really is amazing. But um, some, people, some people like exclusivity and having something that not a lot of other people have. That's not a big motivator for me. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, this knife, this Avenza, is a Blade HQ, ex Blade HQ exclusive, so it is a pretty limited run knife uh, as well um, that's no longer being produced. That's really not attractive to me. What's attractive to me about a knife like this, or perhaps a, uh, uh, a Hinder or XM18, is that they're evergreen models that uh, I can generally get any time that I want. I can, uh, if I scuff it up, if I if I break the tip of the blade, I can send it in. I can get parts replaced. Um, there, there's just a lot of infrastructure there to support me as the customer. Um, in, in a selfish way, I don't know if Angie and Joe are, are, are of this mind, but in a selfish way, I hope that the company has a lot of success and they grow and get, you know, get out of their house and, and get an actual facility where they can manufacture these knives and they get employees and they grow to the point where they're like a Chris Reeves or they're like uh, a Rick Hinderer and, you know, a knife like the Spectre is an evergreen model that, uh, uh, you know, is is always being offered in their catalog of, of uh, you know many different offerings. That would be a wonderful world to live in, and that's probably you know where I would want to uh, become a customer uh, of Whole Blade Works. I'm I'm just not going to sit and watch auctions or lotteries and and week in and week out. You know, put my name in and and try to win you know win the opportunity to pay seven eight hundred nine hundred a thousand dollars for one of these things. I just, that's just not me that, you know, that's, that's no slam against, you know, someone who does that. That's, uh, that's them. That's what they want to do. You do you. <laughs> it's just not me. But, uh, uh, I am thrilled that I've had the opportunity to sample this knife, to sample that wonderful flipping movement that it has to, uh, see the wonderful, uh, embellishment that they've done on this knife. It really is fantastic. And kudos to my buddy, uh, for for actually being able to obtain one, um, who knows what the price of these things is going to do? Um, you know, once once they actually do stop making the the Spectre and, and shift over to the haptic, will you know? I imagine at least temporarily they will go uh, up in price. But again, a knife that you can really only obtain on the secondary market just just isn't attractive to me because I'd have to pay several times the the table price. For that, and, and who knows if down the road you could get that money back. I mean, a year or two later, may, maybe the haptic totally eclipses the Spectre, and and people lose interest in the Spectre. Is that likely? I don't know, but it's a possibility. Um, you know, then they all drop in value. Uh, selfishly, I kind of hope that happens. That way, maybe I can actually buy one. Um, you know, at a at a, at a price that I, that I wouldn't mind uh, paying, um, but. Uh, uh, again, Whole Blade Works seems like a fantastic company. I hope uh, we get past all this COVID-19 stuff and, and I'm able to go to, to Blade Show one year, maybe next year, and, and uh, be able to shake hands and meet, with, meet them and get to know them. Because uh, uh, even if I'll, I'll never own one of their knives, they do seem like lovely people. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care. God bless. We'll see you in the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this production from the Through My Lens YouTube channel. If you did, please click on the like button and do share the video on social media. If you'd like to see more content like it, please do subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and do check out Through My Lens at www.throughmylens.org.